Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Don Chronic, you're here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Destiny 2 weekly reset for July 6th, 2021. And today is obviously a very special day, it is the first day of the Solstice of Heroes 2021. If you don't know, Solstice of Heroes is basically the annual celebration of Guardians in Destiny 2 and we've had it for the last like 3 or 4 years now. And uh, I imagine it's going to be pretty much the same thing as, as last time, and that was it was a slog every single time. I'm not the biggest fan of Solstice of Heroes because I never end up using the armor that we end up getting, or it gets depreciated and it takes forever, but I guess it's something to do. On top of that, we'll be talking about the uh, weekly reset, but first up, just wanted to show you the intro of the Solstice of Heroes stuff, and then take a look at what's been going on. First up, the first thing you have to do is go talk to Eva Levante, and she gets you started by giving you, as I predicted, the helmet, whatever class you're on. I gotta be honest here, Eva is the only reason why I come to these events. It's just, you can feel the love. <laughs> Anyways, you get started with the helmet. Each one of the armor pieces are gonna have, and rarities of armor pieces are gonna have certain objectives you have to complete. For example, going through the European Aerial Zone, which is the new activity you can find in the director on the map. You just go to the map and then you launch it right here, or you could probably launch it right next to Eva as well. And I assume just like last year, you have to complete the helmet by equipping the helmet, which is a 1310 item. It has a bunch of different completion stuff. Once you do the first Aerial Zone or complete this, then she's going to give you the rest of the armor set. Then you have to do all of those. You upgrade it from blue to purple. And Actually, I guess you, I guess before we did start with a green and then go to, oh yeah, right. So it's, it's, it's actually blue to purple, purple to masterwork. So there's three sets of objectives. The middle one is going to be the most arduous, most likely. And then the last ones are going to be the more difficult. But if you play this game a lot, it'll be quicker. All right. So I've taken some time to look over the different things here. First of all, these vendor upgrades are basically the more transparent version of the stuff we did see in the past. As you get more armor sets upgraded, your next class's armor set will be faster to complete, which was so much better than the first year, where if you get the first two done, then the third one will go really, really fast. That's basically what these upgrades are. As you get more, you'll unlock stuff faster. And beyond that, you can also get the new shotgun to drop within the special packages. You can also get Solstice Superior Tier 2 armor to drop in it, and then you can get better stuff with higher stats. I assume these higher stats are going to be quite random and not really a dependable way to get um, the good good. Outside of that, obviously we have the new precision buckshot frame shotgun. Does not say slug, this is a buckshot frame, and it has this particular role, which is not bad, but definitely not what you're looking for. And definitely uh, precision buckshots are not popular. Beyond that, we got some emblems, we got the ability to unlock or buy the shirt, you've got the ghost thing if you want to buy this, this crazy looking ghost, and probably going to be on my thumbnail, let's be honest with each other. And then obviously, as you unlock more stuff, more things will appear. So th this is not the end game of this look. And I imagine the uh, Solstice of Heroes goes for three or four weeks. Uh, beyond that, there actually is another major thing going on right now. If you go over to the Vault of Glass, you'll notice that there is now going to be a difficulty option. Whereas now, you can select Master Difficulty. It's 1350. Pretty much Master. Exactly how I thought it was going to be. It's, uh, I'm pretty much 15 power levels down, which is, which is good. That's exactly how I expected this to be. Obviously, there's going to be more champions. There's going to be maybe slightly different mechanics, but most likely the same. It seems like it's more of a modifier-based thing rather than uh, mechanics where back in Destiny 1, it was more mechanic change. But we'll see. I haven't done it yet. You get better rewards. You get higher stat armor. You get... Um, it, maybe it glows, maybe the time lost uh, weapons and stuff, the depth weapon thing, so we'll see how this goes. Moving on with the regular weekly reset, starting up with the Nightfall Ordeal. This week, it's going to be the Fallen Saber. It's going to be the big shank at the end of the Cosmodrome mission. This is going to be one of those D Destiny 1 missions, and this week it should be the Sniper Rifle. That's because last week was the Scout, and before that was the Fusion Rifle. In my opinion, the Scout Rifle is the only one that's really worth it, and even then, it's, it's still a Scout Rifle, and that's, that's saying something. As far as 100k goes, uh, Legend seems pretty good. It's also one of those shorter but high density missions, so Hero might work, but Legend is probably the best option. Vanguard Strikes playlist burn is going to be Void Singe. The Rotate and Crucible playlist is going to be Momentum Control. This is actually pretty nice and useful for completing a bunch of bounties as enemies die quite easily. Moving on to the Europa stuff, first up the Empire Hunt, we have the Dark Priestess. This one is alright, definitely better than the Technocrat. The Simulation is going to be Survival, which is going to be the one with the cold. The Deepstone Raid Challenge is going to be copies of copies taking place in the second encounter. And in this encounter, don't flush the buff out of the airlock. Moving on to the Moon stuff. First up for the Nightmare Hunts, we have things like Zydron, we have Tannis, and we have Dominus Gaul. Zydron definitely the easiest because you can just hide from him in the rafters. 
For the Garden of Salvation Raid Challenge this week, it's going to be 0 to 100. Taking place in the boss fight, basically anytime you dunk moats at a specific relay, you have to dunk all 30 moats pretty much back to back. There's a special strategy, look this one up. And of course, obviously I did kind of touch on this already, but the Vaults of Glass Challenge is going to be Strangers in Time. I imagine this is going to be on the encounter right before the boss fight, in the uh, one with the Confluxes before the boss fight, but obviously I haven't done this yet. Moving on to Ever vs. Store. Oh my god, I did not know we had this. Moving on to Ever vs. Store to show off what they have available for Bright Dust. That actually looks kind of gross. Uh, first up, we got some stuff like the Cabana Ghost Shell, if you want something like that. We have the multiplayer emote for the Silly Handshake, which is obviously very weird. We have the Transmit Effect that looks like lightning. That was actually pretty cool. We have the ornament for the Grand Luster, which looks kind of like a Souls of Hero thing. I don't actually remember this. Maybe I just didn't get it last time, but it actually looks pretty good. It looks very similar to that Callus Shader we had from the first Leviathan. So I would actually recommend this one. For the other side of Bright Dust, we have things like Catching Rays, where you just put like uh, sunglasses and then the reflector thing in front of you and then you just catch some rays. I, I don't really know when I'd use like 90% of these emotes, or at least to, uh, to emote some type of emotion, but there, it's there if you want it. Obviously we have the Archipelago pitch, I hope I said that right. We have the, um, the ghost actually from I think the last Souls of Heroes, I think this is... Yeah, that's, I guess, that what that symbol is, so it's there if you want it. We have this ghost, or not this ghost, this sparrow if you want this sparrow. We have the twisty dance emote, that's what you're liking. You have the jade rabbit ornament if you want to suffer and actually use that weapon. Ghost projections, transmit effects, they're all pretty straightforward, exactly what you'd expect. This sandcastle one is actually kind of fun. Uh, I have used it from time to time. Uh, for the different shaders, of, shaders available, we have the golden age wine. We also have the welded brass. Each one of these... Uh, not a big fan of how it makes this visor look on a lot of these, but um, beyond that, we have the pomegranate. Ooh, I like the texture. If you if you notice that some shaders have textures with them, and uh, this one looks nice. I like the way that one looks. And then obviously, lastly, we have the tangerine gloss, which literally, I, I don't know what the heck you use that on. And in case you did not know, there's actually a dedicated section for the event, for the Solstice of Heroes event. First of all, you can see everything that's possibly going to be available for the Solstice of Heroes throughout the entire event. Most of these things will appear. A lot of people will probably be very interested in the mini micro. People will absolutely love that thing. You get to see everything that will appear for this particular event. Actually, a lot of very interesting and unique stuff here. I'm not even familiar with, although I imagine some of these were probably around last time, I just never ended up getting them. Everything is here. And one thing that's very important, most of these things are for silver, however, for these specific sets of armor, there are Bright Dust options. Now I only see two Solstice of Heroes sets here, it's possible that um, the last one I already purchased in full, so that's why it doesn't show up, but there should be three different sets that we've had over time. Well, actually, I guess, I guess there were four, but three different sets that have the, the, the good good. And all of these are universal ornaments, so you can actually just put them on any armor piece. And I think later on with some of the Solstice gear, when you finally get the glow and the full masterwork and all that stuff, uh, I believe it gives you like a white glow that you can use as a, an ornament set or something like that. But this is going to be the direct purchase that you can put on anything. And this is the shortcut. If you don't want to spend arduous hundreds of hours, I would just, I would just get this. Moving on, let's talk about the seasonal challenge. Only five seasonal challenges this time instead of seven or ten. Right, so I took a look at a lot of these things. It seems a lot of these are actually geared for the Solstice of Heroes, so you're going to get a lot of these quite easily while doing the Solstice stuff. First of all, defeating a lot of targets with very specific types of weapons. You get bonuses and override, but you can do them anywhere, which again, very Solstice-y. We also have scanning all of the things in the Elixni Quarter in the last city. All you do is go over to the helm, and it's going to be one of the little teleport locations in the bottom left. Increase your reputation to 30, calibrate your weapons against uh, champion enemies with primary, special, and heavy. Keep in mind this is the 8 times large XP. And then finally, completing strikes with a very specific elemental subclass, which is something you're going to end up doing anyways with the Solstice of Heroes. Keep in mind that we have 48 days left in the season, so you still have a long time to do everything that you want to do. Right, so I've taken a look at all of the different options from the Gunsmith. I'm going to go over a few of them. There's only two that really stand out to me. First of all, we have the Toil in Trouble, full auto, auto loading with range and stuff, no faster fire rate assault mag, and no extra damage. Not really something I'm looking forward to. Long Shadow does have snapshots, so if you need a kinetic sniper, this snapshot is there. And we do have a medium scope, but I would prefer the short scope. Last Perdition, one of the options that I would actually recommend here, just an amazing weapon overall. Very high range pulse rifle, very useful in Grandmasters, and honestly, there's not a ton of void options. Although I would I generally prefer to have, you know, a uh, Headseeker uh, Rangefinder or something with Kill Clip 
but a decent option. The other good option is going to be Gnawing Hunger. An excellent weapon. Subsistent uh, Kill Clip is pretty nice. A Pendant in Chambered is nice. And then obviously I'd like to have stability or range here, but it's kind of okay. And this is an excellent weapon. After that, we have uh, Outrageous Fortune. That does have auto-loading, but nothing else of, you know, report. Doesn't have any damage perks, no spike grenade perks, and it's a 150. And 150s are just objectively worse. And then finally, Bad Omens. Again, you have tracking, and then nothing else that good. And finally, we have Hawthorne's Inventory. Showing off the weekly raid challenge for the Last Wish raid, we have Fight Forever. It's going to be taking place in the fourth encounter, in the vault encounter. Just don't let any of the Yellow Health Knights into the center circle area. It's pretty simple. <laughs> I just looked over... This guy looks like he's got this super advanced armor and like bulky and crazy and then he's just got this weird ass helmet just being like, what's going on? <laughs> me too, buddy. Honestly, like literally me too. Anyways, that's going to be pretty much the end of it. Make sure you come check out my live streams at twitch.tv slash diachronic that I have right after these videos. Often open lobbies on these master vault of glass stuff, Grandmaster Knife Falls, as well as the Souls of Heroes grind. Come join us. We do have a lot of fun. And beyond that, of course, thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, I want to give a big thank you to Mary Boudou, Mom and Dad, Dr. Strange, Joe Smith, Monday, Sue Bachmas, Raymond Shunner, your Panther, Coach Shunner, and Casey Reagan for their support on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Sonic and I'll see you guys on the next one.